Airships, the number one sign that you're in an alternate universe or a Miyazaki movie. Now, while they may seem like a bad idea because they're not as fast as planes or as powerful as freighters, airships actually sit in a Goldilocks zone in between them. There's some interesting benefits that innovators are trying to tap into by applying new technologies to these old machines. Are these giants from a bygone era really ready to make a comeback and impact our lives? Are Zeppelins the first step in the stairway to heaven? Or is this just another billionaire's pipe dream? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni, but more on that later. We last talked about airships or lighter than air LTA vehicles back in 2021. I'd say it's time to check in and see if there's been any progress or new innovations in the field. But first, are airships even safe? Aren't they floating hydrogen balloons waiting to explode? Well, the short answer, no. Long answer, we've replaced the hydrogen with much more stable helium. Plus, safety standards for all vehicles have improved. I mean, just look at how far cars have come in the past 100 years, or better yet, planes, with the exception of the recent door blowing out. Now, the longer answer, go check out my last video. Then there's this. Planes move people and goods around super fast, but they make up about 2.5% of global carbon emissions by themselves. Now, in comparison, airships are much greener. Why? Well, because planes have to go fast to stay in the air, which necessitates burning a lot of not very green fuel. In terms of sea transport, the mechanics of water travel mean that freighters can carry an awful lot, but it does take a lot of oomph to move them, and that oomph comes from the dirtiest fuels in the world. Now, often the ships are registered in the places with the lowest environmental standards as well. Now, airships may sit in the happy middle ground. They can carry a lot more than planes and move a lot faster than freighters, and by surfing the prevailing winds, such as those that drive the Gulf Stream, they can travel at a respectable speed without burning much fuel at all. In fact, a paper released in 2022 has already calculated the greenest paths for airship travel, routes where they can catch the best wind currents while absorbing the most solar energy. Now, if you caught my last airship video, you probably remember this. I mean, how could you forget? That's the Airlander 10, also known as the Flying Butt, developed by UK-based Hybrid Air Vehicles, or HAV. So what's up with the weird shape of this craft? It actually produces up to half of the vehicle's lift aerodynamically. It's kind of like a plane. Its four engines and auxiliary wings help with that. But these features allow the Airlander 10 to merge the best qualities of a Zeppelin and a plane. It definitely puts the hybrid in hybrid air vehicles. Last time we talked about the Airlander, they had showcased the luxury sightseeing version of their cabin, complete with a bar and lounge. Now HAV has a modular gondola that they can configure to haul cargo, or up to 100 passengers. Now this version of the Airlander is set to undergo flight testing in 2026 and enter commercial service by 2029. Now, currently, the Airlander uses four diesel engines. Now, this diminishes those green benefits that we mentioned a moment ago, but HAV and their partners at Collins Aerospace and the University of Nottingham think that the Airlander will be all electric as early as 2030. An electric Airlander will produce 90% fewer emissions than other craft, according to HAV. Now, if all goes according to plan, this will make the Airlander the first large zero carbon regional aircraft on the market. Now, the big news from HAV is that they're developing an even bigger butt. And the appropriately named Airlander 50 will carry a whopping 50 metric tons of freight or 200 passengers. A fully electric version of the Airlander 50 is on track to debut in 2033. Now, obviously, that date is really floating out there, but there are some new arrivals to the green airship scene. Before talking about that, there's something else important that I need to float by you, and that's protecting your online privacy with today's sponsor, Incogni. I've mentioned this before, but I signed up for a newsletter from a small online retailer, and after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails I was receiving from companies that I had never heard of. That happens because that company sold my information to a data broker. Sometimes they sell your info to pretty shady people, or they can fall victim to data breaches that leak your data to scammers. I'm sure you've experienced this too. Incogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates on your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. Couldn't be easier. I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for quite a while now, and I'm very, very happy with the results. If you want to take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Use code UNDECIDED at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now let's talk about some of the new arrivals to the green airship scene. 
First up, Google founder Sergey Brin and his California-based company Lighter Than Air Research, or LTA Research. LTA Research may be new to me, but they aren't new to the airship game. It's been working on airships since at least 2015. The team's design was shrouded in secrecy until late last year, when the Pathfinder 1 began conducting some early test flights. Now, these were mostly indoors, or just a few feet above the ground, but the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has recently given the Pathfinder 1 the green light to fly near the Palo Alto, California airport and over the southern part of the nearby San Francisco Bay. Even though it's an impressive 400 feet or 121.9 meters in length, it's only half the size of the Hindenburg. Maybe not the best thing to compare it to. Too soon? Still, it's longer than three Boeing 737s, making it the biggest aircraft in our modern skies. Size matters, especially when you consider the square cube law. And if you don't know what that is, check this out. Planes get their lift aerodynamically, which requires a certain amount of speed. Airships get their lift aerostatically, or from the volume of gas in their balloons. The square cube law states that as an object gets bigger, its volume increases faster than its area. For example, if you were to double the size of a cube, its surface area would quadruple, while its volume would octuple. So as airships get bigger, they quickly get better at lifting things. This makes the idea of creating jumbo airships like the Pathfinder 1 very appealing, at least on paper. So back to the Pathfinder 1. Now, LTA Research has mounted a LiDAR system inside of each of the Pathfinder's ballonets. Disappointingly, ballonets are smaller gas bags inside the airship's rigid frame and not bayonets used to ward off sky pirates. Anyway, LiDAR, or laser imaging detection and ranging, works by firing out a laser pulse and then measuring the time for the reflected light to return to the receiver. Doing so allows the LiDAR to quickly and accurately map its surroundings. It has a ton of applications from being the eyes of self-driving cars to helping us map the bottom of the ocean and Mars to solar and wind farm optimization. LTA Research is using it to continuously monitor the ballonets for punctures or other issues and accurately calculates the volume of helium. Now, this feedback should make the Pathfinder easier and safer to pilot. A combo of diesel generators and lithium-ion batteries powers the Pathfinder, though there is a plan to make it totally electric, just like the Airlander. LTA Research CEO Alan Weston told Popular Mechanics in an August 2023 interview that they're also considering adding solar cells or hydrogen fuel cells to their airship. Can't get much greener than that. Some of the biggest advances made by LTA Research are in the manufacturing process. Historically, companies would put up a mass of scaffolding to build an airship layer by layer. This meant workers were performing delicate operations at great heights, and injuries were common. As you can imagine, this made building an airship expensive and dangerous. As for how they used to build them, Alan Weston said, in the old days, people were climbing up 100-foot ladders. With that in mind, LTA Research developed a rotisserie chicken-style system that rotates their entire airship skeleton. This allows the air shipwrights, which is probably the coolest job title ever, to do their thing safely on the ground. Now, the process involves using lasers to measure the position of every tube and joint on the ship. The lasers work in tandem with actuators to carefully shift the hulking airship just a couple of millimeters at a time. LTA Research is confident that by combining this tech with modern alloys, they'll be able to construct their airships more easily and cheaply. And considering the price tag airships have historically had, I hope they're right, especially because of this. How are you going to get a massive amount of emergency vehicles into a place like this? Natural disasters don't tend to spare the ports, roads, or runways. It's a logistics nightmare. Lives are on the line and every second counts. Yet airships like the Pathfinder 1 can just float over any and all rough terrain and land where they're needed most. Nothing else really fills this humanitarian niche, at least at a large shipping scale, so this application is particularly cool. Now, speaking of humanitarian applications, let's talk about another fresh face on the scene, the French startup Flying Whales and their LCA-60T. Not exactly a catchy name, but when is French ever catchy to an Englishman? In any case, this company is designing a literal flying hospital called Flying Care. The idea is to use vertical landing features to bring doctors right to the heart of a problem. Now that's a house call. And while this idea is very neat, it was the reason why Flying Whales designed the LCA-60T. This was. You see, the French Forestry Service has a problem. It's difficult to move people and cargo through their mountains and forests without disturbing them. So why not fly over them in an airship? But say there's no landing zone, even for a big balloon. Perhaps the cargo's too big for the LCA-60T's 96-meter-long hold. Nope, still on a catchy name. In a scenario like that, though, the airship can deploy transport underslings to reel in smaller objects and airlift bigger ones. And this got the flying whales thinking. 
If the LCA-60T can tackle big, unwieldy cargo like logs, it can probably handle other big, unwieldy things. I could probably phrase that better, but I'm talking about energy towers and wind turbine parts. Physically transferring monolith-like construction pieces to their installation site is a huge undertaking. It requires years of careful planning and logistics. Currently, helicopters handle most of the awkward parts of the journey. But based on its benchmark test, Flying Whales claims that its airship can haul three times the payload of modern helicopters with 15 times less carbon emissions, all while being cheaper to produce. This sounds very promising, so why aren't the skies just full of airships already? Well, there's still some science and engineering riddles that we're going to have to solve before airships make the jump from steampunk to solar punk. Now, arguably the most pressing issue is the load exchange problem. Airships have enough lift to haul heavy cargo, but what happens when you drop that cargo off? How do you stop the airship from shooting upward like a runaway party balloon? The easiest way is to adjust your lift by releasing enough gas to zero out the cargo that you just dropped. This would be acceptable with hydrogen, but belching out expensive and rare helium just isn't going to fly, financially speaking, especially if you're making multiple trips per day as a commercial plane does. Therefore, the simplest way to handle the weight exchange problem is by using ballast. Let's say your airship wants to pick up five tons of lumber. So it sets off with five tons of water already on board. As you pick up lumber, you release the water. Hot air balloons already do this with sandbags. So it's easy, right? Well, only theoretically. Dynamically accounting for every pound in real time is tricky. A miscalculation or a sudden gust could lead to very expensive and dangerous mistakes. So here's a very cool possible solution. Use a compressor to squash the helium closer together, and then the airship has less lift. This technique is actually already in use for underwater remotely operated vehicles. Now, understandably, this is a lot trickier to pull off in the sky, and the air compressors with these abilities are just too heavy for most airships right now. In a 2022 video, Bloomberg asked the Flying Whale CEO about compressor tech, and he said he thinks the technology will be viable sometime in the next five to 10 years. So I hope he's right, because nobody wants to add yet another name to the list of revolutionary tech that will forever be five to 10 years away. There's also the problem of public perception. When most people hear the word airship, chances are the Hindenburg disaster immediately is at the forefront of their minds. Will airships, especially commercial passenger airships, be able to overcome that negative public image? Or will the ghosts of the Hindenburg forever haunt this tech's legacy? That's an important question, and we won't really have an answer to that until we have a few more airships actually flying around. Now, the use of helium should make most people feel safer, but helium has its own issues. While helium is the second most abundant gas in the universe, it's quite hard to come by on Earth. It's mostly found deep under the crust, which makes it hard to extract. And it's primarily found in just four countries, making it vulnerable to supply chain and market hiccups. One of the chief producers of helium is Russia, and the ongoing war in Ukraine has seen Russia curtail its sales of the precious gas. Think about that the next time you want to do that squeaky voice gag. I really shouldn't be doing that. We could always switch back to hydrogen. We know a lot more about it and have better safety procedures now. Hydrogen is less dense than helium and a lot cheaper, making it less of a bummer to release for those load exchange reasons. But the United States has banned its use in military service aircraft since 1922, following another pre-Hindenburg Zeppelin disaster. That ban is still on the books. And even if that ban were lifted tomorrow, hydrogen balloons might still scare away potential passengers. And at the end of the day though, the biggest hurdle facing airships is the same old problem for just about everything. Their higher cost. R&D is expensive. Establishing new manufacturing techniques and fabricating the airship is expensive. Airship pilots are rare. There's only 17 certified full-time airship pilots in the entire United States. Then there's the fuel. Filling even a small airship, think about the Goodyear blimp here, with enough helium for just one trip is estimated to cost about $100,000. And even if all goes to plan, you still have to prove it's safe to the FAA. Now here too, the song remains the same. Certification is a long and expensive process. Now nose to tail, the whole thing is costly. And this is going to be reflected in the ticket prices. Now back during their heyday, a transatlantic Zeppelin trip was two days faster than a cruise and about 5.5 times more expensive. And they're still pricey today. Now granted, there's no data yet on modern passenger or cargo ticketing pricing, but there sure is for luxury sky cruising. Ocean Sky Cruises, a Swedish airship service, claims it'll be flying luxury tours of the North Pole aboard the Airlander 10, starting in 2026. The price? A mere $200,000.
Now, for totally unrelated reasons, you can donate to my Patreon in the links below. Now, jokes aside, the high prices may have done more to kill the Zeppelins than the safety issues in the past. So would this be another case of history repeating itself? Despite all the challenges, airships aren't that far away. Remember that the FAA recently certified the Pathfinder 1. Search just for test flights, but every airship certified helps set a safety standard for other airship companies to follow. It normalizes the process, opening the door for more vessels in the future. Meanwhile, HAV boasts that their first commercial Airlander 10 will roll off the assembly line in 2026. Some airlines like Hibernian and Mel Air have already pre-ordered their Airlanders, and the United States Department of Defense awarded HAV a contract last December. They're thinking about using the Airlander 10 in maritime logistics support roles, so it might not be too long before we see Naval and Coast Guard LTA craft again. And though flying whales is still in what it calls the de-risking phase, its prototype should take flight in 2025. It seems like we're going to be seeing these first deployed in market segments that can foot the hefty bill. So will these not so antiquated airships be our future? Or has this ship sailed on airships? They really do look like they'll fill some niches, but it's highly doubtful that they'll ever fully replace planes or freighters. There are still significant challenges for airships to overcome before that's even a possibility. So will companies like HAV, LTA Research, and Flying Whales be able to handle these challenges in a way that makes financial sense? Will airships ever get over their Hindenburg-related image problem? Or will it all go down like a lead balloon? That all remains to be seen. The sky filled with green airships might not be too far off, at least as long as they can keep the prices down. Instead of rambling on, what do you think? Jump in the comments and let me know. Be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where I'll be discussing some of your feedback. And thanks to all my patrons who get ad-free versions of every single video. If you'd like to support the channel and get in on the early ad-free versions, check out the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one.